Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be carrying out a much required upgrade to the charging system on the SV1000. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the notoriously weak uh, regulator rectifier on this bike with a Shindigen FH020 series um, regulator rectifier. These are renowned for being ultra reliable. They run really cool. It's a MOSFET design, not um, not the old 60s um, technology that you can be found in most uh, regulator rectifiers such as this one. Um, these are much more efficient. They run cooler. They give the stator a much easier time um, and in turn promote a much more reliable charging system on any bike to be perfectly honest with you. The only thing that we need to do is obviously adapt this to fit onto uh, onto the Suzuki. So without further ado we've got a few bits we need to strip off so uh, let's get it let's get into it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna begin by removing the uh, the OE regulator rectifier. Um, it's held in here with a couple of nuts on this bracket that it's mounted to. Uh, just a couple of, uh, that one there's a bolt, that one's a nut. Take them off and then the whole bracket can come out with the regulator. And then we've just got a couple of connections up here to uh, to disconnect where it, uh, where it uh, connects to the loom. So what I'll do, I'll start by removing the fixings. As I said, that one's a bolt, and this one is a nut. Just a dome head nut. And then what we can do, I'll lift it out of the frame, just like so. Right, what we need to do now is obviously we need to disconnect it from the bike, and that is a case of just Popping the two plugs apart, this one here is a bit of a pain. This one can be a bit of a pain. Come on, there you come. There we go. And then, simply feeding her up. That is the stock regulator rectifier. So as you can see, um, whilst the mounting holes are of a similar distance apart, this regulator is not going to not really going to mount onto this bracket in order for us to be able to mount it to the bike. So what we're going to do is we're going to adapt it. So let me get some tools out. We'll take this uh, this regulator off this bracket first and then uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Right then, what I've got here, I've got a, uh, it's just a piece of uh, 5 mil aluminium and it's been shaped to allow me to fit um, this regulator to it. Um, using these mounting bolts. Now this plate itself is normally um, what I use to fit them to uh, VFR motorcycles. Um, I've been doing these for a little while now and these two mounting holes here are what uh, bolted to the frame on, the, on VFRs. So in this application they're actually redundant but what I've done is I've added two new ones. And those two new ones will actually allow me to mount this plate to the stock regulator rectifier bracket and then with a washer and a nut I'll tighten those up in a moment but there you go that's that's what we're uh, aiming to achieve so that allows us to fit the stock um, bracket to the uh, to the replacement regulator rectifier, and it's not going to look odd either. It'll look uh, fairly uh, fairly OE once it's all bolted up. Right then, what I'll do, I'll get these tightened up. As you can see, it's um, mounted to the uh, the original rubber bushes on the 
on the OE bracket and that gives a little bit of vibration resistance so so it's worth me keeping those on there as well. Um, right I'll get these tightened up then what we'll do we'll get the uh, the regulator mounted up to the bracket and then we can look at how it's going to look on the bike. Right then there's a whole lot bolted together we've got the mounting uh, the, the my mounting plate mounted to the OE mounting plate with the uh, regulator rectifier bolted on with a few bolts and some uh, washers and nuts. All we need to do now is mount it onto the bike via its original mountings just like so get that nut on and then the bolt and there we go we can tighten them back up Right, so there's the uh, there's a new regulator rectifier mounted up to the bike. What we need to do now is sort out the wiring in order to uh, get uh, get the battery charged from the stator, basically. Right, so what I need to do is obviously knock up a loo, and I've done that in advance, so let me go and grab it. Right then, in order to wire the uh, the new reg rack to the uh, to the bike, obviously I have to adapt the loo uh, in order to uh, to make that happen. So what I've got is I've got two sections of cable. First one is positive and negative. Now that's going to go to the black connector on the regulator on the regulator rectifier, and then wire straight to the battery. And on the live, that is a 30 amp self-resetting uh, circuit breaker. So um, you're basically doing away with a fuse, and you've got a self self-resetting circuit breaker. They're uh, they're pretty effective. Um, the next thing we've got for the stator cabling is this short little loom. Now this only has to go up to this, ca uh, this cable here, so it doesn't have to be anywhere near as long. Um, and that'll obviously go to the grey connector on the, um, on the regulator rectifier and then connect up to uh, this connector on the bike. Now what I did do is I made a slight mistake. Um, obviously I bought the connector for the spade terminal end um, to match that. However, as you can see, I bought the wrong one. Um, they come in different flavors and obviously this section here should have been on that side. So what I need to do is actually remove this connector here from the loom and replace it with one of these ones. Um, otherwise I can't connect it up. Yeah, I just, I, did, I was, when I was making the purchase, I was doing it from memory. It's not a biggie, I only have to swap the connector over. But that's uh, really, really quick and simple. So I'm gonna do that now. All I need to do is get a little watchmaker screwdriver. Uh, I've got a really tiny one and then I can remove the, uh, remove the contacts from the plug. Right, so in order to get them out, there's like a little spring loaded section on the side of each of these terminals. So what I need to do is just get my little screwdriver in there and force the little spring back. And then I should be able to remove the, uh, the connector from the from the plug. Come on. There we go. So yeah, that's the this here, it's actually gone it's actually gone flat where I've pressed it, but if I push it back out you better see it. There we are. So that is actually what I was trying to that is what I was trying to compress with the screwdriver. By pushing it in and flattening it out, it allows the uh, terminal to be removed. So I'm going to get the other two off and then we can remove the plug. Right then, that's all three removed uh, from, the, from the old connector, which is right here. Drop that down there. Before I, um, before I put them all in the new connector, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Give them a generous coat of um, dielectric grease. Uh, that just stops water getting to them and should help prevent the terminals corroding. Um, dielectric grease is good because whilst it um, stops water getting to it, it, um, it doesn't conduct electricity. So you can actually use it in any connector where there's multiple pins without risking uh, bridging. And without risking bridging pins, basically. So yeah, it's, um, it's good stuff. 
Right, what we need to do next is we need to fit the opposing con uh, connector to this, which is obviously this one. So, just a case of popping each of the connectors into the plug until they click in place. There we go, just like so. Dead easy. Right, let me get on with the other two and then we'll bring it back in. Okay, so I've got all uh, all three of the connectors, uh, the terminal, sorry, uh, transferred into the into the replacement connector. Now, what it is worth mentioning is that it doesn't matter what order you put these in. These are three phase from the stator. They can go into the connector in any order. It absolutely does not matter. There's absolutely no order that they are required to be in whatsoever in order for this to work. Um, three phase doesn't care. Right, uh, what I've done, a bit more dielectric grease inside. Um, this connector and then just feed it through and then bring her up right then simply a case of pop in the two together just like so right what you can do um, is obviously you could cover this with some sort of sheathing I've got a bit of heat shrink here this is quite a large diameter heat shrink you could cover the Connect it with that if you wanted to, and then shrink it down to uh, keep any additional moisture out. The you know it's entirely up to you. Insulation tape, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm probably going to use a bit of uh, heat shrink uh, later on when I finish the job, uh, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. Um, and then anyway, the uh, the other end of this cable simply connects up to the regulator rectifier, just like that. And there we are. So that's that part done. What we need to do next is um, the positive and negative charging leads for the battery. So let's move on. Right then, next stage is obviously we need to get power from the regulator rectifier back into the bike to the battery. So that's what this little uh, this little section of looms for. This is uh, this this cable here is made with uh, ten AWG cable as opposed to the twelve AWG that I used for the stator cable. So slightly thicker for these two um, for obvious reasons. Uh, and what I'm going to do is obviously, as I said, wire it directly to the battery. So what up here at the back of the tank, there's a nice little there's a nice little expanse of space where I can just rest the. Uh, circuit breaker there's plenty of uh, space in there and plenty of slack on the cable to get up to the battery and then obviously this one goes to the negative so what I need to do is pop up the tank just spoil it like that and then basically I need to feed it down to the regulator so I'll um, start feeding it in get it into where I need it to be plug it up to the regulator and then we'll bring it back in Right then, as you can see, I've got the cables up near the battery and I've just ran them up inside the frame and under the tank. Um, obviously all of this stuff here, I could pretty far later with some sheathing just to uh, hide the garish colors. Uh, you know, just use some black sheathing and it'll look uh, fairly OE. So what I've done, I've disconnected the, uh, the terminals on the battery. What I need to do is obviously now wire these directly to it. That's one, and then, in fact, what I'll do, I'll orientate this cable a little better so it comes around like that, I think, and then tuck that done, and that looks pretty good. Right, next, negative. Keeps around the cables fairly tightly. Right. 
and then the seat going on won't interfere with any of that whatsoever uh, as you can see I'll remove these two bolts there we are that's the seat one right what we need to do now now it's all connected up is we need to fire the bike up and check the uh, check the charging voltage at the battery now um we should have in excess of 14 volts uh, i can't remember what the figure uh, that the manual states for this bike but obviously we're not using the oe uh, st um the oe reg rec anyway so it's largely irrelevant uh, but anything over 14 volts at the battery and i will be perfectly happy with that right so let me go and get me uh, let me go and get me multimeter out and we'll do that next Okay, we're all set. I've got my multimeter out. What we're going to do is we're going to start the bike up. Okay, we're setting it to DC volts. And then what we're doing, straight across the battery. And we're getting 14.55 volts. Absolutely perfect. So I'm well happy with that. I'm happy that the stator is out actually outputting good quality three phase. And I'm happy that the regulator rectifier is rectifying rectifying that down to 14 and a half volts DC, which is plenty to operate all the electronics on the bike and charge the battery at the same time. Let's turn that off. Uh save me shouting. Right. Now um, what I will say is that the regulator rectifier on this bike hadn't actually failed so I've done this as a purely preventative measure um, what I do need to do in addition to this is I do actually need to look at the stator itself now these bikes are renowned for the magnets um, on the actual uh, rotor coming uh, coming loose um, hitting each other breaking actually disintegrating and ended up in the uh, in the engine oil so I do need to look at those. Um, that's going to be a job for another day. I'm not going to do that today. Um, but obviously, when I do it, I will film it. So, yeah, it'd be a case of uh, taking it off, having a look. If any have moved, um, I need to um, put them back where they need to be and make sure that they're stuck again. Anyway, this, um, this mod is pretty, uh, pretty quick, pretty simple, and it's not particularly expensive. You, the regulator rectifiers themselves... You can pick them up on eBay for around 60 quid, give or take uh, a, a few pounds either way. Um, they're found on MT-09 models, FJR-1300 Yamahas. Um, there's also a, a variant of them which can be found on the BMW S1000s, uh, GSX, uh, GSX 1000s, 750s, uh, stuff like that, what I'll do. Um, I will pop uh, links in the description to all the stuff that I've used um, to to make this mod, basically. I won't link um, a rectifier because it's pointless, because as soon as somebody buys it, the link will be dead anyway. But yeah, what I'll do, I'll, I will put in the description what it is you actually require and what you're looking for. Um, and I will also uh, include a few little pointers to help you buy a genuine one, because these Shindingen um, regulator rectifiers are heavily, heavily counterfeited. Uh, and there's a lot of Chinese copies um, flooding the market. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, if it's too cheap, the chances are it's a fake. Um, so that's worth bearing in mind. But uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll put a few pointers in the uh, in the description below. Anyway, guys, um, all that remains for me to do is just tidy the cable it up a little bit, sheath it so that it's nice and uh, nice and inconspicuous. Because at the minute it's yellow, red, and red and black. So. I can make it all black with a bit of sheathing, uh, and and then uh, yeah, it'll um, it'll be good for quite some time to come. Uh, these Shindingen regulator rectifiers are notoriously reliable, absolutely notorious, reli notoriously reliable, and they will probably outlast the rest of the bike. They're they're n not renowned for for failure at all. In fact, I don't know of any that have um, personally, um, and um, I've had a lot of these uh, regulator rectifiers through my hands. Um, in recent times okay guys hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did give it a like um, consider giving it a subscribe and I will see you all again for the very next video thank you very much guys bye bye now